Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of bootstrapping, which is a form of historical simulation used to estimate value at risk, or VAR. For my FRM customers, I'm drawing from Paul Wilmot's chapter where he discusses both Monte Carlo and bootstrapping as simulations. And so the key difference there is the Monte Carlo simulation uses an algorithm to generate a portfolio path going forward in time, whereas the bootstrap that we're looking at here uses historical returns instead of the algorithm. And so the generic steps are given right here. First, we index the historical returns. In my example, I'm going to use daily returns and talk about it in terms of daily returns to keep it simple. Then the second step, here's the key step in the essence of bootstrapping. We randomly select a cross-sectional vector. What that means is we go back and randomly select a day from the historical window and use that day's returns for each of the assets. That's a cross-sectional look. I'll show you what I mean. Third, we simulate. We use those random selections to simulate forward. That's going to give us the price of the portfolio at some point in the future and then we're going to repeat that now here's the fourth step as many times as we want which will give us n number of hypothetical simulated portfolios in the future at that point we can treat this just like historical simulation we can sort that list from top to bottom best to worst and look up down the list to find the value at risk that's the final step and I'll show you what I mean now and so I have a lot in this page, but this first four are just the first four steps. If we just focus right here, all that I've done is I imagined, I made this up, a small portfolio over a short period of time. I have four stocks that I made up in the portfolio over six trading days so that I can calculate a week. So here I have a row of prices over the week for this stock with ticker GRT and then another row for the second stock in the portfolio and the third and the fourth. So my first step is I'm going to go over here to the right and I'm going to index the returns. And so if I take this first cell right here, all that it contains is the formula for the continuously compounded return. So I've got the natural log of the price on March 3rd divided by the price on the day before in that case, I made these up, I get 9.5%. So I'm being pretty aggressive or vivid in my example. But this first stock then had a daily return of 9.5%. So you can see I've done that for each stock in the portfolio. Now I index. That for March 3rd, I assign that an index of 1. And so 1 is the index for March 3rd and it captures a vector of daily returns. See how this is a one a, a vector with one column and four rows. It's also a cross-sectional view on the portfolio because it's the returns for each stock within the portfolio on a given day. And now if I go over to the right, you can see that I have calculated periodic returns for each of the four stocks in the portfolio on March 4th and I give it an index of 2. March 5th has an index of 3, March 6th, 4th, and March 7th an index of 5. Now what I'll be, I'll be able to do in the second step is go back and randomly select my vector which really means I'm gonna just randomly select either this day or this day or this day and that is going to give me a, the means to simulate going forward in time. So let me show you just what I mean by that. If I go down a little further and move this out of the way, and here I've got the four stocks, and now we're going to think about going forward in time. And all that I've got here is a random function, and you can see I'm going to hit my F9 recalculate key in Excel, and it's recalculating these numbers at the top. But I've set it up because I've got a function here that just does random times 5 and takes the integer and adds 1. The, at the top here I'm just going to get random numbers from 1 to 5 and that's because I had a very short uh, time horizon, a, a historical window of only 5 days. 
So I have a very small sample. That's not realistic. It would be much bigger, but so I'm going to get in this first cell right here, random number from 1 to 5. See how that works? Okay, I'm hitting F9 to recalculate each time. Well, okay, here I'm getting the random number 1. What that means is I go up to my index and I look at that cross section of returns, that vector, and I pull that down. That's how simple that is. Now, that, so that's one day forward in time. Then I go another day, I get another random number. This time I got a random number of five. That means I go up to my index and I look at five. And that just corresponded to March 7th in my example. That's a vector of cross-sectional returns. And see how that gets pulled down here and so on. See how I'm building forward in time a simulation where each day forward in time simply is based on a random selection of some historical cross-section. So I think that's pretty neat. And that is just a short step. That was really the key. So these final steps are really pretty straightforward. I gotta move this down even a little bit more. And now if I go to my same portfolio here and let's just assume today is the stock price and now I'm just simulating forward in time so all that I'm doing here is I'm taking the price today this is for day n plus one I'm taking the price today and I'm up, I'm compounding it by my simulated return up here and I'll, I just need to multiply by exponential function of that to get the return. But the point is here in this case, $15 today gets simulated by this first return that's part of my first, sim, my first daily simulation. So all that I'm doing here is going up to these indexed returns that were randomly selected. And so if I hit F9, you can see each time I do that, I get a different set of historical simulations and I just decided to take this out at eight days again my none of this is necessarily realistic and I can then add those up again and what I'm getting is a simulated future portfolio now if I do that once I get one portfolio and I can store that do it again store it and so you can see I start to collect a sample of simulated portfolios so if I go down again move this out of the way just for example that gives me a number of trials and as I said before I can treat that just like historical simulation I can sort it from top to bottom and look down the list for the value at risk and so that summarizes the bootstrapping approach and a couple things about it the first n really neat thing about it is I didn't need to specify a distributional assumption so I didn't use the normal distribution, normality is not assumed. Whatever is the shape of those historical returns determined, so I'm not bound to the problems of the normal distribution. The second thing that's neat about this is, if we go back up to this indexed returns, we calculated the actual historical cross-section of returns, so if there is cross-sectional correlation, it's automatically picked up in this approach and so that's neat too so hopefully this is a helpful introduction to bootstrapping this is david harper the bionic turtle thanks for your time